Senator Graves, it's good to see you. And you are now recognized for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, join y'all and, and love to hear all these people talking about the, the, the Gulf Coast. Um, I, I might be the only one who is in space. Can you speak up? It's hard to hear you, Representative Graves. Sorry. I said, hey, it's it's uh, it's great to see y'all, and I appreciate the opportunity to join. Um, and I hear all these conversations about the Gulf Coast, and that's actually the area that we represent and, and live in South Louisiana. So um, uh, this is this is home, and I appreciate everyone's interest. Uh, a, a lot of things, you know, kind of get distorted in translation a little bit. And I think something that's really important, Mr. Chairman, that, 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 that you and I discussed yesterday in committee is that uh, Deepwater Horizon spent a lot of time in the courts listening to the judges, reading the judgments, and, and something that's really important to keep in mind. Uh, Dr. Bosch, you know this. The, the, the judge found that the responsible parties uh, were grossly negligent, that, they, that there was willful misconduct. And, and so what that shows is that, is that this was an operator that was way out of bounds. If they, were, if they did everything right and there was just some accident, then they wouldn't be $40 billion out of pocket. They wouldn't have been found grossly negligent, which nearly quadrupled the civil punitive penalties that they were forced to pay. And so I, 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 I think it's really important that we keep that in mind. Secondly, something that's important to keep in mind is, is that as we saw under the Obama administration, when there were efforts to effectively um, uh, reduce the amount of domestic energy production, it didn't have an impact on supply. Excuse me, I got that backwards. Um, it, it did have an, it, it, the, the demand didn't get changed. It, when, we, when we choked down on supply or domestic energy production, it didn't change the demand for conventional fuels. It just changed where it came from. And, and I believe Dr. Bosch noted this before, the, 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 the offshore actually has the lowest emissions um, uh, from any production in the United States. It, we have the lowest emissions. And so, so if we're going to produce anywhere on the globe, it might make more sense to do, do it in areas where we do it safely and do it uh, within the rules. And when people don't do it within the rules to where they are held accountable uh, to the tune of tens of billions of dollars, which I remind everybody was the largest settlement from a single company in U.S. history. Um, let me go over uh, Mr. Mr. Schwartz. You made comments about Fieldwood Energy. Quick question for you. How much of that liability that you noted is, is on the backs of taxpayers? Well, we we don't know how much is going to be on the backs of taxpayers. The result of that I, I can answer the question. Yeah. None. Because because you have because you have other responsible parties that are contractually obligated Not to, to cover those costs. Yes. And in fact, they're really pissed off about it right now. But, but that's how the law works. Look. This is no, where I live. That's not true. The people that we represent. No, it is true. It is true. You have other companies that are contractually obligated. Go look up what Apache's doing in other companies right now because they're pissed off that they've got this stuff around their neck right now. So also there is some, some of that, that is true, but there are also that the, that, the, that the National Pollution Fund Center is funded through barrel taxes that is paid by the industry. So, so, so these are dollars that are coming from the industry, and you're going to have folks that are held liable for that. It, it, none of the liability is on taxpayers right now. So, so I think it's important to, to get that out there. Dr. Stutz, thanks for being on. I'd like to ask you, um, uh, the, the role in the Great Red Snapper Count, for example, the role of the offshore energy in terms of habitat for some of these species, could you just talk about that a little bit and if it's beneficial or, or if we should just remove it all? Uh Thank you, Congressman Graves. Yes, the Great Red Snapper Count showed literally millions of pounds of fish that are using these artificial structures, especially in your region and further in the Western Gulf of Mexico where we don't have structured habitat. In fact, there's evidence now suggesting that our fisheries population would not be as robust as they are now or have the same sustainable capacity if we didn't have these structures. And I mentioned earlier, certainly we want safe infrastructure out there but we need to have these structures in the waters to support those fisheries. And, and that was the primary conclusion of the study in terms of, of where these fish occurred and what habitats they using. Oil and gas infrastructure is very important to those species. Thank you. And I know I'm running out of time, Mr. Chair, but just want to throw a quick question to Dr. Bosch. Dr. Bosch, look, 
you you and I have known each other for a long time, and and we've had a lot of discussions about the offshore and coastal Louisiana. Just just and, and I know that you love science and and you believe in it. Recognizing global energy demand going up fifty percent over the next twenty nine years. Recognizing that we have some of the lowest emissions uh, uh, per per unit of energy produced in the Gulf. Looking at what happens around the world with energy production. Do you believe that we should just shut it all down? Or do you believe that there's a, a better way to move forward toward a clean energy transition? Yes, of course, you, we can't shut it down. We depend on fossil fuels for the time being, but we need to we need to get off of it. We need to have less reliance on it. We need to, as you've pointed out many times, we need to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, essentially eliminate them ultimately. And so using more renewables, using less fossil energy is, is the pathway going forward. I would commend to you the, the international energy agencies analysis on how we get to net zero because it does talk about the future of fossil fuels it does recommend no new fossil fuel developments by countries but it also recognizes we're going to be continuing to use the resources that we already have but it's got to go down and it's going to be reduced and, and i think someone pointed out a, a, a new uh, international energy agency report just today just yesterday said that their estimate, and this is an agency which is not an environmental agency, it works closely with the industry, that peak, peak fossil fuel production will be 2025 and then it'll go down. So my, my point in the testimony was we really need to understand what that means for the Gulf. We, we need a safe Gulf, we need a, we need a good environment, and we need, to, we need to ramp down in a way that doesn't hurt people and communities and provides us the energy we need. And in the end of this period, 20, 30 years, we have a healthy Gulf. Uh, as well as um, uh, avoiding a global disaster with loss, with uh, uh, greenhouse gas gro continued growth of greenhouse gas emissions and and missing the target of getting to net zero. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Bosch. And I want to make note that same IEA is the same ent entity that said that the U.S. transition to natural gas has resulted in the largest decrease in greenhouse gases in energy history. Um, and so certainly need to continue building on our successes and learning from our failures. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, you're back. 